Hey everyone, Sherwood Small Pets here. So, uh, hi, I'm back, kind of. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm still here. Um, I've been away from YouTube for quite a while. There's a lot of reasons. I'll get to those, I promise. Um, not in this video though. I kind of want to take this video to kind of go a little bit more back to basics on, you know, like with my old videos and just you know, do an informative one. I will do an update for all of you guys who've put up with me for so many years um, really soon. But I do, like I say, I wanna take a quick second to just have a nice old school chit chat video for helping you guys as potential new pet owners. This video is called Thinking of Getting a Dwarf Hamster. So since you've had, since I've had my channel, I have not had a dwarf hamster in my house. However, I had dwarf hamsters for years before I went, got onto YouTube. I had, I've had three in my, um, hit, like, I guess history as a pet owner, as an adult. Um, I had Toothless and Hiccup, which were two boys that we got out of a situation where they were being given away as snake food. And this was back, um, when we were all, when we were under the impression this was before using the like forums and YouTube was really popular, um, we were told that every that dwarf hamsters should have a pair, etc. etc. So we got them together. They were brothers, and they lived in they lived harmoniously for eighteen months. And then one day I came home and Toothless was actually nearly dead, and I had to separate them. So it was a really traumatic experience, uh, because they're hybrids and because of course they were not from a good like place, uh, they had a whole bunch of neurological issues. Toothless actually had five strokes in his lifetime that he recovered fully from each time. Um, we had Toothless for, he was five weeks short of his third birthday, which was really impressive considering he'd been blind, uh, since his altercation with his brother and, um, had had, had numerous benign tumors. Trust me, this guy made the vet almost laugh. He was, so resilient and such a tough little guy that, um, you know, I, 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 after he passed away, it was really hard for me to ever really want to get back into dwarfs because we put so much time and effort into him and he was such a sweetheart. But I decided, um, with the passing of Pua, who you guys barely got to know, I barely got to know her, um, that maybe it was time for a change. And so we've been talking with a rescue local to us well, not really local, but like local-ish for where we live. And I'm fairly confident that we're going to be adopting a dwarf hamster from them. And I'm really excited about it because it's something different. I never thought I'd get back into dwarfs. Uh, we had a another dwarf called Ashling for a little while. She had severe, she had type two diabetes because the people that uh, she was living with before basically fed her corn. <laughs> so she was very obese. We got her down to a healthy weight. But then, um, again, she had a neurological thing. I don't know what happened. We're, the vet was pretty sure it was a stroke. And she developed severe cage rage. She was great when she was out of her cage, but you had to use like a mason jar to get her out or she'd like lunge at you. Um, but she was really lovely. But after she passed away and after we lost Toothless, it was just kind of like, I don't know if I could do it. But now now I'm actually really excited and I'm, I didn't think I would be. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about a dwarf for a very, very long time. I always thought it would just be me and the Syrians. And now I'm just like, you know what? This sounds like a really great thing. And also I can use smaller hamster accessories again that I've had for years that I've just put away because I don't throw out hamster supplies because it was always, finding good ones is really hard, especially if you want stuff that's size appropriate for Syrians. Um, but dwarfs, there's actually small things out there, which is kind of awesome. So I thought I'd show you, you know, talk to you a little bit about getting to know dwarf hamsters, um, how I'm going about prepping for them. And, you know, if you think a dwarf is right for you, this is kind of what I'm doing. So this is our Detolf. It is over five feet long. Um, this is for me the best hamster set, like size, like cage for a, a Syrian or a dwarf. Um, it seems like a lot of space for a dwarf hamster, but they're busy. Like they are extremely active little things. And, you know, the more size, the better, right? Because unless they are really old or they have some kind of handicap, generally the bigger the better is, the, is a good rule of thumb. Uh, it is not the tallest cage. However, there's nothing for a dwarf to really climb. That being said, you also always want to make sure that you have a really good lid. This is a homemade lid. Uh, it's just with 
mind the staining, it's old. But this is just with wood. It's untreated on the bottom. And uh, uh, hardware cloth. So screen, like a wire mesh on the top. So it's, it's completely hamster proof. Uh, it kept Esmeralda, our Syrian hamster, who was very, very intelligent. It, she never got out, so that's really important. Uh, along the bottom, what I do is I seal it with aquarium sealant, same with the sides, um, to protect the wood and to protect the hamster. Uh, you let that sit for 24 hours before you put anything in it. That's the same for me as I do with the Syrians. Before, if, before I get a new one, I always check all the ceilings to make sure that everything is, you know, still intact. I've never had a hamster chew the sealant, but because it's the same idea as having a tank, right? You just do it yourself, so it doesn't always look as professional. But that's because I was really new at it when I started. Um, I still generally like a mixture of substrates. Uh, dwarfs need more because they actually do burrow. Um, but I'll be mixing in Boxo. I haven't bought it yet because I actually, a lot of the stores that I used to buy them, buy it from, have stopped carrying, but I used to buy it in bulk, so I haven't had to buy it for like two years. So anyway, that's another thing. So there'll be another substrate added on top. On the bottom, I put Aspen, and then uh, on the top, there's just a layer of Carefresh. Mostly that's just because like I like the color. But then I'll put Boxo, and I'll probably mix in um, some lighter, like the crinkly paper stuff in certain spots for easier nesting. And I just like to mix it up because I don't. every hamster has different preferences. Um, I used to only use Boxo, then I had a hamster that really enjoyed um, the shavings and stuff, so yeah. Substrates are important, options are important, depth is important. Uh, little things for them to do, like I've got fake wood here, I've got driftwood down there in the bottom, and I have corkwood. I have corkwood rounds and I have corkwood flats. So both of those are really good um, for them to climb on, helps with their, keep their nails shorter. And also, I really, just, I like the way it looks, but it's, you know, it provides a really nice, it provides good shelter and a good, like, activity for them. I really, I enjoy it a lot. You can get it at reptile stores or just at PetSmart even. Um, in terms of water, I usually have at least two bottles, uh, just in case anything happens to one or, um or one stops working. Same with guinea pigs, right? You always have, have, have to have a backup. And if I go away for the weekend, even though somebody's always watching, I usually put a dish in also just because, again, you can never be too careful. Food, hamsters are usually really good at storing themselves, but water is something that you gotta stay on top of. Um, little houses, I have them scattered everywhere. Sorry for the glare, it's morning and it's actually bright for once. We don't have a whole ton of, uh, of rain, it's awesome. So I have a strawberry sized house. This is a little big, but I think it's really cute. It was booze, um, so I have an emotional attachment to it. This is actually a little beehive. It's a fish accessory, but this used to belong to Toothless. So I actually had it all washed up and saved for if I ever got another one. So I'm really excited to be able to use it again. Um, over here is just an overturned teacup right here. And then this one is just an acorn that I got from Petco when I was in the States several years ago. And then this is just a mushroom because it's adorable. In terms of exercise with the dwarfs, because they're so little, um, I have the six inch, six and a half inch silent spinner. Um, not big enough for a Syrian. Just FYI guys, even though it's marketed towards them, it's not big enough. And then I have my ancient rodent wheel. I call it is stained. Um, it's clean, but it's stained because it's old. But these are wonderful wheels. There's nothing that beats them. This is a quite a large wheel. I absolutely adore it. Um, small Syrians can use the size wheel also. Um, I prefer the bigger ones for the for Syrians, but it's what I always used. But this is perfect for a dwarf. I like to give them options for exercise, especially on either end of the cage. Um, their diet is something else you have to really consider. Uh, Syrian hamster or Syrian hamsters are a little bit more. You can be a little more liberal with their food. Uh, high protein is also very is obviously very important, but with dwarfs, they have the risk of developing type two diabetes, which um, which can be lethal in in pets if it's not looked after properly. So I like to mix uh, nugget type food because it's got all the vitamins and it's high it's very high in protein, which I really like. Uh, I usually break them a little bit more, but this I just left it here so that you know what they look like. Um, is that focusing? I can't tell. But I mix that with 
a little bit of the Oxbow uh, round donuts. And I still actually have the Hazel Hamster. I bought back when I realized that they were getting rid of them at PetSmart. I say or I froze a whole bunch of, bunch of bags. And then what I do is I take all the corn and all the flat peas out. Uh, the corn is really, really high in sugar for, uh, for hamsters and it's just not necessary. Uh, so it's especially important for dwarfs. So their diet is, you know, very important. There's also, they'll be getting, he'll, um, they'll get dry mealworms just as a treat and, um, the odd piece of vegetable. I'm not a big fan of giving fruit to them because it's so high in sugar and it's just not necessary. But, uh, yeah, so dwarf hamster diet, you just have to make sure it's, it's low, it's low in sugar. And again, it's the same as with any hamster. You don't need the fillers like corn. Um, but it's not hard to have a good successful hamster diet. It really isn't. Um... What else is there? I think that's pretty much it. Uh, dwarf hamsters are very fast. They, they're they not all like Syrian hamsters where once a Syrian hamster is tame, generally they're tame for their whole lives. You do have to keep up with the contact. So like you have to, you know, they do need regular time out, um, regular socialization, or they will go back to not trusting you. Um, they, they can be the sweetest creatures ever. You just have to, they do tend, because they're all, in our country, they're all hybrids, so they do tend to be a little bit more nervous, a little bit quicker. They're not like, well, again, not all Syrians are cuddle bugs either, but you just have to know that they're they're fast. So if you're looking for like a snuggle buddy, not all dwarf hamsters are going to fall into that category, and it's important that you understand that. That's not something that I'm, I need in a hamster. Like, I don't require it to be a snuggle buddy. If I need a snuggle buddy, I have this guy. I mean, or this guy, but not, not as much, Most, mostly this guy. So, um, that's, that's pretty much it. They're, they're fast, they're adorable, they need a lot of exercise, and they're extremely, extremely active, and they're very unique, and also they are prone to a few more health concerns than a lot of than a Syrian hamster. So it's something you need to kind of consider. You need to make sure you have a really good vet. That's the same as any video I ever make. Make sure you have a good vet that knows the species. Um, we do. I've never had, you know, I've experienced different problems with dwarf hamsters and all hamsters over the last like 10 years. And having a vet that understands that they're more than just a throwaway pet is essential. You know that you know that I'm saying that I'll say this once and I'll say it a thousand times. If you don't have a vet, don't get the pet. Um, but beyond that, I'll keep you guys updated. I really hope that this works out. Um, I'm very, very excited, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Take care, everyone.